if you go to someone who is suffering from extreme anxiety, I don't know, something simple, like they're really nervous about public speaking and you're, they're about to go and talk to present to a big group of people who are their peers and they're shitting themselves because even though they've rehearsed absolutely everything, they know their material, they're still nervous because, you know, what if it doesn't work? Or what if they're suffering from imposter syndrome? I'm not mm. suggesting that these are things that people shouldn't feel. They're completely natural. Having the butterflies, being nervous when you're being tested, when there's a magnifying glass in front of you and you have to perform. Everybody's nervous. Anybody who doesn't tell who tells you that they're not nervous, they don't care, they're they're lying. I don't mm. care if you're LeBron James uh, or or anybody else, professional race car driver, professional athlete, very experienced politician. Everybody's always nervous when they're being examined. The question is, can you harness that energy and just go, okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to work with it and use it, use that, use that anger and use that adrenaline to focus. You have to learn to enjoy it because if, if you are nervous about it and you're scared of it, it's just going to make it worse. Mm. There's, um, this is a, this is a slight aside to, to a story which, which, I know you didn't ask about, it, but I'll but I'll tell you anyway because I think it pertains, yeah. and it's and it's to do with um, it's to do with my dad and and how my dad passed away. So I was uh, my dad died of a heart attack, and I was fortunate because I was we didn't know it was going to happen. It was sudden, but although we knew that he had a weak heart, so it wasn't it, at the same time as being sudden, it also wasn't a total surprise. Um, he'd had mild heart attacks before and a mild stroke. Um, he'd had, he was a diabetic, he'd had two stents installed, so it's not like it came out of nowhere and he got hit by a truck, but nonetheless it was a surprise. And fortunately for me, I was able to spend two weeks with both my parents. I was on holiday at the time, and this happened at the very last day. So we'd had a really great time, we'd spent a bunch of time together. And, and the reason I bring up the story is because uh, I remember in the weeks and months afterwards, um, both my friends and my mother would frequently ask me, uh, how do you, how are you handling this? How are you not freaking out about this? How are you not freaking out about, uh, about what happened? And I said, what do you mean? And mom would say that she finds herself, you know, waking up in the middle of the night and suddenly remembering the last few moments. And then she tries to hide it and stop thinking about it, but she can't and it bubbles up again and then it takes over and she gets completely consumed by it and she gets really sad and upset and she can't handle normal life. And I said, and I said, that's interesting, mom, because the thing I think you're doing wrong, or at least wrong is the wrong word, uh, the thing I think you're doing different, which is a key thing, is you're trying to not feel it. Mm. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, the story you just told me, you said that you start thinking about it and then you f try and force yourself to stop. And I said, and she, she goes, what do you mean? And I said, don't do that. Just think about it fully, every detail. And, and she says, I don't understand, but that's horrible. And I said, no, 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 it's not. Think about it. If, if I, because what would happen to me is, of course I would think about it. I was there when it happened. I gave him CPR, um, waiting for the paramedics to arrive, and I was unable to restart his heart. And when I start thinking about it, I, I, do, I, I do the opposite of trying to stop. I think about every detail. I think about the noise and the rasping of the breathing, the, the rhythm of the, of the chest compressions, the cracking of the ribs, as you'll hear under the pressure of the chest compression. And the reason I think about it is because then it's mine and I control mm -hmm. it. Whereas what mom was doing is she was, she was trying to hide it, which meant that it controlled her because it would constantly keep coming up. And I, and I bring that up as a story because I think it's, it's similar to how you end up handling stress, where when stress can easily be overwhelming and it can easily control every aspect of what you're doing, whether it's, whether it's lack of confidence or anxiety or many other aspects of, of nerves when you're, when you're putting yourself into emotional roller coasters. Mm -hmm. And if you try to push it away, Ultimately, unless you're, unless you're some kind of sociopath, you, you will fail because you can't hide these things. They're stronger than you. So instead, I think you have to just accept it. If anything, you have to run towards it because if you run towards it, then you're in control of it. And then ultimately, that's the way you get through it.